Greetings and welcome to Van Man Talks with Mrs. Van Man. Alright, budge up, because you can't drive, so... I can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings and welcome. Now, as planned, I will be doing a QA and a today with Mrs. Van Man. She's in the van with me. And we'll be asking your questions. I asked you in on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and on the last video if you had any questions for me. And you all replied. I've got a good 20 questions, so we're going to drive back to Worthing. Um, let's get the camera facing the right way. Put that in there. So, yeah, we're going to drive back to Worthing, and I'm going to answer your questions. Are you all ready with some questions, Miss Furman? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Question number one. I have no idea what these questions are. You've just screenshotted them all, yeah. so it's going to be a bit of a surprise for me. So oh. we'll see. Okay. Does Mrs. Van Man prefer him with a big, long, bushy beard? <laughs> oh, well, that's a question for you straight away. <laughs> do you prefer me with a big beard? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah, you did quite like the you beard. Look, didn't you look, you look like a like a like a Viking. <laughs> Very okay. nice. Yeah. There you go. That answers that one. What are you doing now? You're snacking. Oh, um, no. <laughs> okay, second one. How long would Sunak stay in the UK after losing the election before he commences his US book tour? <laughs> I don't think I don't think Sunak's got anything to say in a book. Book. I'm sure uh, when he uh, when he obviously uh, loses the next election, I'm sure he'll like to sod off to America, but writing a book, I mean, what would he put? What would he put in a book? Uh, I took over for a bit. <laughs> That's about it, really. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I can't see him having... I see him more, like, probably getting, like, a big tech job in America or something. Uh, that's where I see him. A little bit like Clegg when he uh, pissed off to go join Facebook. So, yeah, I don't think he's got enough. What, what would be... Would anyone read a Sunak? Would you put, read no, Rishi Sunak's you. book? Don't take my money. I, I, I think... <laughs> <laughs> it would be pretty dull. <laughs> Next. Is there a need for a new political force that has the interests of the working class as its priority? And do you think that trade unions should be its driving force? Interesting question. Um, yeah, obviously, that, that would be a great thing, but it just comes down to the voting system again, doesn't it? You, 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 a a union-driven working-class political party in this country is never going to win an election under first-past-the-post. Um, so, yeah, if we get proportional representation and we get a decent trade union driven working class party, that would be fantastic. You know, that, that would be one of those things where you'd have like an ideally maybe like a centrist Labour Party in power backed up with a working class union party that's just pushing them to get all the uh, all the good stuff through. But yeah, until you change the voting system, that's, it's never going to happen. Next. Hello, Van Man, and thanks Hello. for your great channel. Oh, you're welcome. My question is quite straightforward. Why do you think the Lib Dems are the only party with a cannabis legislation policy, given that polls keep returning the same good levels of enthusiasm for le legalisation? Good question. Um, well, the reason the Lib Dems are prepared to do it, and the Green Party as well, I think, would have that in the manifesto, is they're not going to piss anyone off, are they? No, everyone knows they're not going to come in power. The main two parties will not do it. Again, back to our first-past-the-post voting system, they'll piss off too many people. Too many older people are petrified of any sort of drug legalisation. Your old uh, your old dears, your old mortgage homeowners and stuff, they're petrified of the thought of people because they don't understand the subject of, of, of marijuana and weed. They're, they're just, it's not a world that they live in. They think that there's going to be people stoned off their tits and causing havoc and stuff. There will be people stoned off their tits, but <laughs> they won't be causing havoc. Have you ever seen uh, a stoner get arrested? Where they put, try and put the handcuffs on. He mm. thinks it's like a magic trick or something. It's like, it's, 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 it's like they're causing no trouble. They're causing no trouble. But um, I am Houdini. Yeah, exactly. 
but yeah, the main parties won't touch it because it's a it's a vote killer. Imagine if he, the Tories or Labour put it in their manifesto. So many older voters would that would really upset them. It's stupid. Not enough people know uh, are educated enough on on drug reform, really. Have it. So that's my main answer to that. Okay, ready? Yep. How would you control the media? Oh, just full stop. Yeah. If I was in control of the media. Well, I, I mean, I, I still and always a, a massive free speech advocate. And I, I, I generally don't have a problem with talk TV and GB News style news channels existing and certain newspapers, but I would just have much heavier regulation. I mean, stuff with GB News when they start talking absolute nonsense and pure lies about climate change when they start saying the BBC are taking temperatures from the airport tarmac <laughs> and uh, this, uh, you know when they're blatantly lying they should be absolutely crucified to the hill when the Sun newspaper came out with um, you know take your brick the Hillsborough disaster the, the Liverpool fans stealing from dead bodies and absolute pure uh, horrendous lies um, they should be absolutely crucified and taken down. Uh, when the Sun newspaper put a headline of one in five Muslims sympathise with jihadis that we've seen before, that it's just pure lies. Where's the research? Where's the survey? What are you taking it from? They should be absolutely crucified and taken down. So I am all for free speech and I want independent news sources and you can have your right-wing news sources, your left-wing news sources but there needs to be massive regulation. And if, if news sources, if your Daily Mail and The Sun are just printing absolute lies, then they need to be taken down and harsh consequences. Yeah. What is your opinion on stop and search? Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I actually really don't like this topic because in a way I can see both sides. I mean, how many stabbings have we had in Brighton recently mm. with young too, too young kids? Many. And you know, a lot a, a lot of stabbings in London are down to the, the the drug war and stuff. But then a lot of it is is kids just getting into fights. And now because they carry carry knives, they have to pull the knife out. And then if they pull it out, they have to use it. Um, but also, I'm I'm not for police officers just stopping people on the street and like. You know, empty your pockets. I want to see what you got. That's not, that's not freedom. That's not life. It's just there's there's something horribly wrong with that, and it always gets targeted with with racial, the racial element in in London and and stuff where police specifically target black kids and Asian kids. It, it just happens and it's so messy. I don't like it. I don't want to live in a society where a police officer can pull you up, pull you over with no evidence of any wrongdoing at all, and then go into your pockets. I don't fundamentally don't like that. Um, and again, with the with the knife crime issue, you know, it, it, we're always trying to sort out the symptoms rather than the the actual cause of the problem. You know, we really need to get into the cause of it. And drugs. You know, I've talked about drug reform so many times. We need to clear up the drug war. Um, but yeah, I guess I, I can see both sides of it, but really in my heart, I'm not I'm not for stop and search. I, I don't like the idea of a police officer being able to pull you over with no evidence of any crime, any wrongdoings, and just go, go into your pockets. I don't, I don't like it. No. Okay. Next. What's your dream van? <laughs> That's a good question. I tell you what, my dream van is the van that I have right now. I love this van, but if it just had double the amount of electric range on it as many of you know I only have 80 miles of range for this van which kind of suits me okay for the business that I have and the business that I do but I'd love more range and I love the VW Transporter it's a lovely van it's a beautiful van to drive it's, I love it you like this van right? I do yeah so yeah my dream van would be this van but with a lot more range <laughs> I'm going to jump to an, another question because we're sort of close to Shoreham. She says, next time you go past Shoreham, can you swing past Surrey Street and show what they are building on the left, Maddie's? <laughs> okay. Yes. I'm trying to think, I can't, I can't remember my street names in Shoreham. Surrey Street, I think it's that bit before you get to um, McDonald's and 
I try and point it out. I try and point it out when we go past it. I think I know where it is. But more likely than not, it's going to be luxury apartments. That's all that keeps being built at the moment down here on the south coast. Luxury, not affordable, decent homes for families and stuff like that, but luxury apartments. So I guarantee that's what it is. Um, but if it's the bit that I think it is, Surrey Street, I'll point it out when we go past. Yeah, I'll point yeah. it out. So I am drinking quite a bit of water today because we went for a night out in Portsmouth and went to see Electric Cool Boy. Um, all right, I've had my good 12 hours between drinking, I don't, but <laughs> I am a little bit tired and uh, a bit thirsty. Ready? While I understand you live in oh so pretty Brighton, where do you choose to go on holidays? Ah, uh, uh, well, um, Mrs. Van is from the Philippines. So we've been to the Philippines quite a few times and it is my favourite country in the world. I absolutely adore the Philippines as the most friendliest people in the world. Uh, one of the most beautiful places in the world with landscapes and beaches and, and great food. Um, we haven't been to the Philippines since 2015. We're going there in April for the first time in a long time. It's been a long time. Um, but yeah, previously last year we went to see your, your auntie in Miami in Florida and we uh, rented a car. I've got a video. I've got a video from that, yeah. from that trip. <laughs> that man talks over in Florida as we drive the Florida Keys. Uh, but we like our city breaks in Europe as well, don't we? You know, going over to Paris and, and uh, we need to do... I really, I really fancy going to Seville next year. I really want to go to Seville. Seville looks really nice. I went to... Uh, you didn't come, but... <laughs> I went to Brussels and and um, went to Brussels and uh, Bruges at the beginning of the year. I love city breaks in in Europe, and we need to use the Eurostar more because it's only sort of two hours to get to Paris or Brussels. So uh, Amsterdam, we've done obviously as well, haven't we? Um, but yeah, definitely Philippines is our main destination just because our links to it, and I love that country. I, I probably, anyone that gets a chance to go to the Philippines, go. It's one of the like I say, the people out there are so amazing, so friendly, so nice. Uh, yeah, that'll be it. Okay. Again, sorry, it's clear the the conservatives have dug their own grave for the party, and all the factions in the party are busy trying to throw the other into it. The question is, what is making Labour electable beyond? The implosion of the Conservatives. Many of the core issues today are not new. Junior doctors had the same complaint in 2014. The rental market was a terrible how was te was terrible. House prices were high. Schools were in trouble. Crime was bad. Okay, he said 2014 there. I don't know whether they meant 2010 because obviously 2014 the Tories were four years into. Is he saying that the same problems were still there back in Labour's tenure? Maybe you meant what 2010 is, or 2014. What is making but the main part of the question the is basically what is what, what is making people vote for Labour other oh. than they're, they're not the Tories? Yeah. Um, which is a, a, a question that many people have been asking and many people don't know. And, and that is it at the moment. They are just not the Tories. I think this is the, the Surrey Street bit that he's talking about oh, yeah. so are they building something over there i probably got it wrong yeah it's that, that flats yeah Southern yeah it's luxury housing. apartments isn't it it's yeah. luxury apartments so it's, it's yeah. got to be i like i said i don't know my shoreham street names that well but i'm pretty sure that's surrey street over there where the um, yeah so luxury flats so yeah what well, well, not the labor and not the tories yeah i mean <laughs> it's <laughs> but is that good enough i mean to be honest that's good enough for a lot of people. I mean, just the fact that they're probably not corrupt is worth voting for them. But yeah, they need to be. They need to get people excited to vote for Labour. Uh, I'm not excited to vote for Labour. I'm, I'm excited to get rid of the Tories, but I'm not excited to vote for Labour. But it will come. I think it will come. We'll, we'll see more in the, in, in the next year. Um, but yeah, the same problems. I'm not sure whether they, we have the same problems, like I say, back in 2014 when it was still a Conservative government. I don't know whether we had those same problems back in the 2000s. I don't know. Let's move on. Hopefully I answered that okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was Labour... a long, long drawn out question, that one. Mm -hmm. was there. <laughs> if Labour win the next GE, do you trust them to make a difference or would it be 
just Tory lied? Uh, well, that kind of goes along with the same last question, doesn't it? All I can do is hope, mate. All I can do is hope because we have our voting system, we have our first past the post, we either vote for red or blue. You just have to hope, mate. No one knows. I don't know whether Starmer will be a fantastic Prime Minister or he'll be a terrible Prime Minister and he'll, he'll do nothing for this country or he'll do lots for this country because all he's doing right now is doing and saying whatever he needs to in order to win the election. And, you know, I get that. I understand that. Um, but I just have to have hope. I just have to have hope that they'll, they won't be Tory light. That's all I can say. It's a bit of a random one. Who is your favourite beetle? Stag beetle. <laughs> I assume we're talking to band, or you? <laughs> Who's my favourite? I'll be honest, I don't, I don't really like the Beatles. I respect them for what they are and what they've done for rock music and stuff, but I'd never listen to the Beatles now. I mean, music's moved on for me. There's far more exciting stuff out there. Um, if I had to pick one, I'd probably go for Ringo for bringing a generation of kids to be able to play, play the umbrella. Do you remember that video? You've seen that video, haven't you? No. Where, the, where Paul and John are playing their guitar and Ringo's got an umbrella. I'll clip it in if I, if I, if I can find it. But he is, he is a good drummer, Ringo. He gets, a, he gets a lot of stick for some reason for being a bad drummer, but he's good. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I'll go for Ringo. They need to stop wheeling out Paul McCartney at bloody Glastonbury and stuff like that, though. The guy is like, my God, he must be in his 90s or something, isn't he? Uh, guy, it's, it's, it's time to, to give up playing live music because he's always been terrible, whatever I've heard. Yeah. Okay. Yep. If Starmer is a former hum human rights lawyer... Uh, wait, wait. Is Star... Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> there might, there might be some spelling mistakes or yeah. something. Yeah. Is Starma is, is a formal human rights human lawyer. Rights is lawyer. he ignorant or complicit through his silence in these war crimes? Drive safely, always tune in. Is he complicit? Well, I mean, I mean, he's not stupid. He knows what's going on. And he knows that there's um, human rights being... Uh, you know, when you're starving out a country and you're um, doing what Israel is doing. But same thing with Starmer. <laughs> the same, whenever I answer a question about Starmer, whenever he answers a question or whenever he says something, you never know where it's his true thoughts. You never know. Because all he's doing is saying and what he needs to do and needs to say in order to win the next election. And he's so petrified of saying anything that might be deemed as anti-Jewish uh, that, you know, he didn't want to condemn the retaliation from Israel on Palestine and starving kids and, you know... This... <laughs> it's, this isn't honest politics with, with Starmer. I, I guess I want him to win the lex next election because the alternative is the Tories. But when you've got a, a, a leader that's so dishonest in every area and you, you can't trust anything they answer in it, any questions that are posed to them. But I also, on the other hand, like I said before, I, I understand why you have to do, use these tactics in order to win an election in this stupid country where we have stupid election rules. Um, but yeah, the, the, the point of the question, was he complicit? He, know, he knows exactly what's going on. He knows that there, there's human rights being violated, but he needs to say what he needs to say in order to keep everyone happy in the Labour Party. Uh, yeah. Can you do an inset screen showing the van's battery percentage as you drive? <laughs> <laughs> I could do, but that would mean I've already got two cameras in here. I'd have to get a third one going on the, on the, on the uh, percentage. Uh, I'll just try and do it. At the, maybe I'll do it at the start and at the end of the, the video. But yeah, I've done a few videos where I've had... Um, it's been a bit hairy. I've had like 25 miles of range to drive, like 20 miles. So it's been a little bit scary. Uh, but that would be good if I had if I had a third camera. Maybe I could zoom in on the uh, on the range, and you could have it ticking down in the in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this one is a biggie. How do you view this Palestine-Israeli war? <laughs> oh, I thought you meant it was a long question. I was waiting no, for that. It's a biggie. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've talked about this in previous videos. I'll sum it up quickly. 
Um, my opinion is I don't really want to have an opinion because I don't know enough about the subject. And uh, I have a little bit of knowledge, which is far worse than having lots or no knowledge at all because you don't know where that little bit of knowledge has come from. Um, it's, it, it, most people share the same opinion. I mean, we'd love to see a proper two-state country. I'd love to see that country literally just split in half, Palestine in the south, Israel in the north, or vice versa, whichever works best. Um, but, you know, we, we, I condemn the attacks from Hamas and I, I condemn the awful retaliation from Israel and starving kids. It's, it's god-awful. And everyone, everyone's heart in the world goes out to all the people that are suffering. There is no definitive side that I will take. Um, we just need that country split in half, desperately. And uh, unfortunately, I think this war is moving us further and further away from that. But I'll go into detail on my last two videos on that subject as well, if you want to check those out. But yeah, I don't like talking about it, really, because I, I just don't feel like I'm educated enough to give a decent, decent answer. I can just give my opinion. That's all I can do. Okay, this one. Please may I ask if either of you can solve this riddle. Brexiteers in 2016, leaving the EU is vital to the fate of our country. Brexiteers in 2023, leaving the EU is irrelevant to the fate of our country. <laughs> okay, alright. So basically what they're saying back in the referendum in 2016, mm. Brexit supporters were absolutely obsessed that this is the the most amazing thing that was mm. going to happen to this country, and uh, you know we need to do this for the progression of our country. Mm. Now we've had like nearly four years of Brexit, and everyone's realised that it's absolutely terrible for the country. It's mm. not doing us any good, and there is no tangible benefits. Brexit mm. supporters now are trying to ignore it, and then you know all the problems in the country. Is anyone moving on this traffic light here, or are we just? We just Hello. Chill it out. Hello. Oh, oh dear. great. Oh, don't you just love that? He gets to go, but we have to wait because I don't know. He's having a chat or something. That, but, that woman <laughs> with the dog. She was like, "Hey." <laughs> but I, I was going to beat, but I didn't know whether someone had like broke because there was a big truck. I didn't know if there was someone in front of it that had broken down or something. I don't know. Uh, um, but yeah, now everyone knows that it's, it's terrible and we've got so many problems in this country which are down to Brexit. Brexit supporters will say that Brexit is irrelevant and it's not important to the issues that are going on, even though it was such a driving force. You answer the question yourself, really, mate. I mean, the Brexit supporters have now cottoned on to the fact that it's bullshit. They know that it, there are no tangible benefits to Brexit and they, they want to push it under the rug rather than just being a grown up and admitting that maybe they made a mistake. They just want to sweep it under the rug they want to do next do you think ukraine palestine is a good win double I don't, I don't really like comparing those wars they're completely different um so basically you saying would i like ukraine and palestine to win well, well no because i mean what what is a palestine win what them taking over the entire country or i, I don't know that question has so many different meanings um yeah, the, uh, comparing those two wars is is stupid. They're, they're completely different. But oh, well, would I like to see both of them resolved? Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, that's all I can say on that one. Okay. It's a nicer one, this one. What country would you want to visit the most that you've not been to and why? Oh, loads. Tons. Vietnam. Really want to go to oh, Vietnam. Oh, you go to Italy. Italy. Um... Uh, Japan at some point, but it's so bloody expensive. I mean, yeah, but like you know, just once. All we gotta do is just visit once. Yeah, well, we we can do these these sort of countries as a stop off on the way to the Philippines. Mm. Can't we? we can do Vietnam, we can do Japan, um, Singapore, uh, any other countries. Um, but yeah, it's crazy that we've never been to Italy, though, isn't it? We definitely <laughs> we definitely need to sort that one out. I can't I can't believe we haven't been to Italy yet. Um, food. Uh, yeah, main one for me, Vietnam, really. Vietnam's at the top of the list that I want to go to. Absolutely, I want to get a moped and just uh, travel up and down, eat all the food. Um, so yeah, Vietnam would be my number one. What would be your number one then? Probably Japan. Mm. Yeah. I want to go see some like crazy Japanese metal bands in, oh, in yeah, Japan. Oh yeah, definitely. That would be definitely. so much fun. That would be awesome. Yeah. Okay. 
Did you have a party to celebrate the Tory B loss B losses this week? And who did the music? Tory B or B? <laughs> by election. Oh, okay. So they lost. They lost. Yeah, they lost to a by election. Yes, yeah, I always have a party when there's any failure of the of, of the Tory. Uh, the music. The music was done by myself, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Vanman. <laughs> Okay. Do you think that the number of people who don't now vote Labour because they are they aren't doing what they want, not for the working classes, etc., will affect the next election? Okay, so basically I think what they're saying is do you think the the left wing vote for Labour dropping out and going to the Greens or going elsewhere will have an effect on Labour? Um no, uh, I, I don't think it will really, because as long as they're not going to the Tories, which they won't. So basically the sort of Corbyn fans of the mm. Labour Party, the ones that are much more to the left, are getting disgruntled. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them at all. You know, like, like I just said about Starmer, we're not really getting anything of substance from Starmer. And what he is giving us is not that. It's, it's just maybe might be a little bit better than the Tories. So I understand why a lot of these left-wing sections of the Labour Party are, are moving away and they're going to be voting Greens. Will it do damage to Labour? No. Unless they're going to the Tories. I think any vote that isn't a Tory vote is fine. Um, I think a lot of these votes will come from big stronghold Labour seats anyway, cities. Um, I think the majority of, of left-wing Labour votes come from cities that are most likely still going to turn Labour without them anyway. And again, I have to keep going back to the voting system in this country. The battlegrounds won't be in the cities. It won't be in London. It won't be here in Brighton. It will be in those northern seats, a little bit of Scotland, uh, where they need to pick up votes. And that's that's where Starmer's vote, focusing his attention and trying to grab seats. Uh, so no, the, the left-wing vote floating away from Labour, I don't think will have too much of an impact. Because I guess the theory is of what I've heard before from people that are disgruntled with Labour and, and, and don't want to vote for them anymore is that UKIP, um, back in the day, a small party that people started descending to, made the Tories go in a certain direction and that's what they want to do now if they all go to the greens it will make labor want to do more left-wing policies that's that's the theory behind it but then what are you going to do you're going to end up with another five years of the tories for a protest to get the labor more left-wing yeah i short answer i don't think it will i don't think it will affect the, the labor vote too much okay last two would you rather become a presenter on GB News or start your own auditing channel? <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus Christ. I forgot all about auditing channels. I done a video on auditing channels a long time ago. It was a it was a weird phenomenon that, that started coming up on my YouTube feed. Anyone that doesn't know them, it's this weird thing where uh, guys just go out on the street with a camera and they turn up at someone's work or something and start filming like the security and stuff at the workplace and because they're allowed to do it when they're in public uh, they, they just keep saying that and the people get annoyed and quite rightly so if you turn up at someone's work and start filming them you know bad, yeah? Yeah, um, the no no fine thanks what are you well you at the moment well, I to do, it. do I need permission well, tell me what it's about, then I can't tell you that can't tell you that. So can't tell you that. Well, you can't just film us Who said? What? Who said? Well, it's the law, mate. Is it? Yeah, Are you versed in the law? What? Are you versed in the law? No, you just can't film No, well, I am, so back to work. It's a bit weird, but there's this weird phenomenon, this weird culture of people doing these YouTube channels and they call themselves auditors and they get thousands of views where they just go and pester people at work and shove cameras in their face. It's really. Mm -hmm really weird for all but no i wouldn't do one <laughs> would i be a presenter on gb news hey if they want me i'll be there i'll be there i'd love to go on gb news i actually like gb news oh yeah i really like it as like a satire type thing it, it's, it's very funny um and I, also actually to be fair on gb news they they do have a lot of uh, opposing views come on the channel i do respect them slightly for that um i just don't respect them for the lies and propaganda but they're quite amusing.
Yeah. Next. Last one. Oh, okay. Will you be posting videos on other enthusiasms outside politics? Uh, okay, well, I do have my other channel that I haven't posted on for a long time because this one takes up most of my time, which is the uh, Fat Man Talks Metal, where I talk about bands and albums and gigs and stuff like that. You can go check that out. It's down below if you want to take a look. Um, I will be putting out a video um, when I get round to editing it. It's going to be... God, I'll let this guy in. Uh, you know about this because you helped me with some of the filming for it with uh -huh. uh, where I went on my political and social media detox during April and May for a couple of months got rid of social media put the phone down and that time that I would spend on my phone you know you see that screen where it says you've been on your phone three hours for today or something mm -hmm. well mine was two hours so I dedicated two hours every day uh, to start in a vegetable garden in my garden started growing vegetables so um, but I've got loads of footage of that and I, I will edit it it's going to take a while but I will edit it and, and, and put it up as a, as a video yeah. yeah so that was the last one um, or have you so um, I'm I did a did you mess up I did a boo boo. <laughs> I, Mrs. Van Man normally says who who the messages come from. Yeah, but I'll put the messages up on screen yeah, so just, you can just see. Do, yeah, just do that because I messed up today. <laughs> I'm tired. We are a bit tired, like I say, we went to a gig last night. I couldn't even the... read properly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all of them then? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Awesome, right, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed that video. Um, thank you so much for putting your uh, comments in. Uh, you seemed to enjoy it last time, so I thought I'd do another one. I can't, I can't get you in. Right. We need to have, well, if we're gonna have another third camera, we'll have another camera for you, we'll have another camera for the range, we'll have five cameras going on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks for sending your messages in, your comments, I really appreciate it, your questions. Um, if thank you like the guys. video, click like. If you uh, wanna subscribe, if you haven't, subscribe up there and i'm sure there'll be another video up top that you can uh, you can watch as well till next time let's say goodbye goodbye it's been amazing thanks guys <laughs> this is so cool <laughs> till next time take care